Dear students, this is time that we discuss Virginia Woolf, the foremost modernist of the 20th century. And she was a famous member of the Bloomsbury group of intellectuals. And there are a number of novels written by her like uh, Mrs. Dalloway, To the Lighthouse, Orlando, A Biography, and she's also a popular orator and uh, essayist. Uh, and she is very popular for her book length essay, A Room of Consol. And there is a very popular saying in the book, a woman must have money and a room of her own if she wants to write fiction. And this book has been considered as the Bible for the feminists. And you will first say lady who suffered mental bouts during her life, and she was institutionalized also for a brief time. Even though she got married with uh, Leonard Woolf, she committed suicide at the age of 59 by putting stones into her jacket and jumping into the water. She was drowned to death. Virginia Woolf and James Joyce were very interestingly born in the same year and died in the same year. Both born in 1882 and both died in 1941 and Virginia died by committing suicide and as far as James Joyce is concerned, he died due to natural causes. And we have discussed the novels of Virginia in other videos. And in this video, we discuss the biographies written by Virginia. The biographies are also written in the format of novels. And starting with uh, Orlando, a biography, it was written as a novel and published in 1928. And it describes the tumultuous relationship between Wolf and her lover, Victor Sackville West. The lesbian relationship between Virginia Wolf and Victor Sackville West, who was a close friend of Virginia. And they maintained a lesbian relationship for almost uh, 10 years. And after that also, they continued to remain together. Victor Sackville West was an important member of the Bloomsbury group of writers. She was a poet and a novelist. A few of her poems were published in the Georgian poetry. In the fifth volume of Georgian poetry, a few of her poems were published. And she has got a very popular collection of uh, poems, Orchards uh, and Vineyards. And she is also popular for her novels, like uh, Edwardians. Edwardians was written in the format of a Bildung's Roman. And the other important novel written by her was All Passions uh, Spent. And these are the last words of Milton's play, Samson Against Us. Milton's closet drama, Sansom Agonistus, ends with the words, All Passions uh, Spent. And interestingly, the title of uh, Vita Sacculi West novel is All Passions uh, Spent. Vita Sacculi West and the Virginia Woolf were friends. Sacculi West was 10 years younger to Virginia. Virginia was born in 1882, whereas Victor Sackville West was born in 1892, 10 years younger to Virginia. And Virginia died in 1941, and Victor Sackville West died only in 1962. And they were very close friends. And the biography of Victor Sackville West is presented in a fictitious manner in the novel Orlando, a biography. And when we go into the plot of Orlando, we come to find Orlando living a life for almost 300 years. So it is a, a meta-historical work. So a meta-historical work. And it speaks about the life of a person for 300 years. Orlando was born during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. And he worked as a page in the court of Queen Elizabeth. And he was also a favorite of Queen Elizabeth. And after the death of Queen Elizabeth, she 
gave him some postings also and Orlando fell in love with a girl named Sashi and Sashi was an unfaithful girl and she left him and went to Russia and after all Orlando started working in various positions and during the time of Charles II during the restoration period. He continued to live for almost 300 years. So the beginning is 1608 and the ending is 1928, covering almost 320 years. During the time of Charles II, he was appointed as ambassador to Constantinople. And he went to work in Constantinople. And while engaged in busy work in Constantinople, he went to sleep. And he could not be waken up. He continued to remain sleeping for a few days. And when he woke up, he identified that he was transmorphed into a woman. He had become a woman. A male has changed to a female. And what was he to do? He left Constantinople, joined with a gypsy group and remained with them as a female and uh, so continued with the gypsies for a period and finally returned home alternately changing as a male and as a female in disguise she appeared in her own place and formerly he was in love with another lady he was in love with the archduchess named Harriet while working in the Elizabethan period he felt attracted to the Arch Duchess Harriet and he meets Harriet once again and this time Harriet has also transmorphed into a male and Harriet has now become Archduke Harry. Formerly she was called Arch Duchess Harriet. Now she has been changed into a man. And when Orlando has turned to become a female, the Archduke Harry proposes, but Orlando refuses and remains there in his hometown and fights a legal case and wins in the case. And uh, Orlando becomes able to get his property back. And during his early days onwards, he was found writing a poem, a long poem. It was called The Oak Tree. And during the 18th century, he met uh, Alexander Pope and Nick Green, another critic, Nicholas Green. Formerly Nicholas Green, so told him that his poem was not worth reading and he wanted to change the, the structure of the poem, Nicholas Green. And Nicholas Green is also introduced here as a man continuing to live for a long time. And Alexander Pope is also introduced in the course of the novel. Pope instructs Orlando in writing the poem. And the critic Nick Green also gives a few advices to Orlando. And Orlando continues to write the poem, The Oak Tree. But is not in a position of completing it. It takes him a long time to complete the poem. And in the course of her life, she gets married with uh, a sea captain named uh, Marmaduke uh, Bandrup uh, Shelmerdine. She gets married with a sea captain named Marmaduke uh, Bandrup uh, Shelmerdine. And his identity, his sexual identity was also not confirmed. And it was not sure whether he was man or lady. Anyhow, Orlando got married with the sea captain Marmaduke Bondrup Shelmerdine. And Shelmerdine appreciated her talent in writing the poem. And Orlando spends her time completing the poem. And say in 1928, Orlando became able to publish the poem. And she wins a praise also for the poem. And towards the end of the poem, Orlando is waiting for her husband, Marmaduke Bondrup Shelmerdine, to come to appreciate her. 
and she suddenly finds an airplane hovering around her under the face of Marmaduke Bondroop Shelverdine. And uh, Marmaduke Bondroop uh, so comes down from the plane and when he comes down, a bird was found uh, hovering around his head and uh, Orlando is found shouting, a goose, that it is a wild goose. And the novel comes to its end uh, at the stroke of midnight on October 11, 1928. The novel ends on the midnight stroke of 12 on October 11, 1928. Actually, it was the day the novel was given for publication. So it is a very interesting biography written by Virginia on Vita Sacrilli West. Vita Sacrilli West was the lesbian friend of Virginia. He was very beautiful, strong, and courageous like a man. And Virginia maintained a lesbian relationship for the lady with the help for almost uh, 10 years. And uh, the opinion of uh, Nigel Nicholson, which has actually West his son, Nigel Nicholson, after reading the book, uh, maintained that it was the longest and most charming love letter. He had a great appreciation. The son of Peter Sacrilli West uh, had a great appreciation for the novel Orlando. And he identified that Orlando was actually his mother, Peter Sacrilli West. And he maintained that the novel was the most charming love letter in literature, the longest and the most charming love letter in English literature. And after Orlando A. Biography, we come to find another biography, and it is Flesh A. Biography. Flesh. Flesh was actually the dog owned by Elizabeth Barrett Browning, the wife of Robert Browning, who was also a poetess. Elizabeth Barrett Browning. During her last days, as she was suffering from tuberculosis, she lived almost a lonely life, and she had a friend named Flush. Actually, Flush was a dog. UGC also asked the question. The protagonist of Flush, a biography, is a dog. Who is the protagonist of the novel Flush, a biography written by Virginia? It's actually a dog loved by Barrett Browning, Elizabeth Barrett Browning. And Elizabeth Barrett Browning produced two poems also on the dog. The first poem was To Flesh My Dog. And the second poem was Flesh or Fanis. And from these two poems, Virginia Woolf uh, got the material for her biography, Flesh, a biography. Actually, in the biography, she speaks about the intimate relation between Elizabeth Barrett Browning and the dog Flesh. Once while shopping, Barrett Browning lost the dog. And the dog was stolen by some criminals. And she paid six guineas, in fact, to release the dog. And after all, the dog was there attending the marriage function of her servant, named Lily Wilson. Normally, when there is a dog in the home, it will be attending the various functions. It will also be a part of uh, the family. And uh, Flesh was a close friend of Elizabeth Barrett Browning. And the story of Flesh is described by Virginia in her biography, Flesh, a biography. And it is written by her in 1933. She also produced another biography called Roger Fry, a biography. And Roger Fry was a friend uh, who was also there in the Bloomsbury group of writers. And he was a painter, he was a critic, and uh, he was also a friend of Virginia. And on his death, Virginia produced a biography, Roger Fry, a biography, and it was produced in 1940. And these are the three biographies written by Virginia. Orlando, a biography, Flesh, a biography, and Roger Fry, a biography. And we will see you again with another video. And thank you for the time being.